Hi there, welcome to this tutorial for digital notebooks. Um, this template is the succulent theme, so if you're using a different theme, it might look a little bit different than this. However, all the things that I'm going to show you today will still be relevant to your theme. So first of all, a quick tour of what you'll get. So I've included a blank background. First of all, you can use this however you wish. You could insert shapes on it, for example, and type something into the shape for your students. I've also included some icons. So these are just some commonly used icons that you can add to your slides or your students can add to slides. To do that, you just select it, copy and paste onto whichever slide you want. They can also be resized. I've also included some student icons and these are intended for students to use in order to develop their metacognition. So if they're really proud of something that they did on one of the slides, they might put, I'm proud of this, or I love this, or check this out. If they feel like something's a little bit hard or they need some help, they might put this feels difficult or I need help with this part. So just a little optional um, activity here in order to increase metacognition. I've also included some other elements such as a postcard template, Polaroid, some commonly used shapes and some notebook paper. All of these can be copied and pasted onto any slide in order to just to add some aesthetic appeal. Now in this file, you get four different options for your notebook. So you have a four tab notebook that has four tabs along the side. I've also included a five tab, a six tab, and a notebook with no tabs at all if you don't need that navigation. So let's start today with some inspiration. So first of all, you are able to fully customize these notebooks with your own text, pictures, and links. All you have is a blank canvas and it is yours to make your own. You can also add clickable text to the tabs uh, if you want to. You don't have to do that, that is optional, but I will show you how to do that in this video. So I love these digital notebooks as a teacher activity for your students, but I also love them, or sorry, as a teacher created activity, but I also love them as a student activity. I love the idea of students taking creative control and creating their own digital notebook. Here's one example of how you might use this as a welcome package. So for example, in this one, I've taken a four tab notebook, named each tab something different about um, what students might need to know at the beginning of the year and created a little title page. This is an example of how you might use uh, the five tab notebook as a weekly or daily schedule. So here, I've uh, every tab is a different day of the week. On the left side, you'll see that I put a quote of the day activity asking students to think about what they think this quote means. And then I've added today's schedule on the right hand side. And this would allow students to click through the weekly schedule and see what's coming up throughout the week. This is one of my favorites. So in this example, I've shown you how you might use this with students as, as a student created digital notebook. So this is an example of how you might use this as an autobiography. So this would be great at the very beginning of the year, but honestly, it would be great at any time throughout the year. Here I've taken the tabs and I've named them different parts of the autobiography. For example, hobbies, interests, family, my summer, anything like that. Uh, one great idea I think is to let the kids decide what they want to label their tabs and that way they're not being forced to write about something that they do not want to write about when it comes to their autobiography. Now I've just inserted simple pictures here. I've put some outlines, put that Polaroid frame like I showed you and the little camera icon just to dress up the pages a little bit more. And then your students can just type stories, explanations, information, facts, etc. You could also use these digital notebooks as a parent handbook. And here's an example of how I've done one of those. So here we have classroom information, policies and procedures, etc. And I've color coded these to match with the tabs. And my intention here is to make these rectangles clickable so that a parent could just click on the on the rectangle or on the words and be taken directly to that section in the parent handbook. You might also use digital notebooks as math notebooks or any subject for that matter. Here's an example of how you might use this for math. I've named two of the tabs, strategies and journal. You might have tabs for morning work, 
uh, fluency, problem solving, games, links to virtual manipulatives, etc. The sky is literally the limit. So there's some inspiration for you. I hope that your mind is working away trying to think of how you can use these in order to add uh, to your classroom. So let's get started with the creative part. So first of all, when you open up the file, you are going to have a master copy. And I actually recommend naming this your master. And this would be the copy that you do not delete from, add to, or anything. You just want to keep it as is so that you can always come back to the master copy if you need to. Now what you can do from the master is make a new copy and this will be your working copy. There's two ways you can do that. You go file, make a copy. You can either make a copy of the entire presentation or just selected slides. If you make a copy of the entire presentation, it is going to copy all of the slides that you see here. So then what we would do is go through and delete anything that we don't want. However, we can also make a copy of just the slides that we want. That's the option that I'm going to use for today. So first of all, I need to select them. So I want to have my icons. I'm going to start at page six and I want to copy all the way to page 24. So what I can do, I already selected page six. Now I'll hold down the shift key and press 24. And now it selects all the slides in that range. So now I will just go file, make a copy of selected slides. And I'm going to rename this so that I can find it easier. I'll call it digital notebook sample for today and click OK. And now a new copy of this uh, digital notebook is going into my Google Drive folder. And my internet is, oh, a little bit slow and I encountered an error. Now sometimes when you get the error message, it's usually a Google Slides issue. So we will just try again here. Okay, let's close that and I'll try again from here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here I've got all my pages. Now, how can you delete a page? I don't want this four tab notebook uh, cover page. So I'm just gonna select that and press delete and it is gone. I can also add as many pages as I want to this notebook. So for example, if I want another page in the pink section, so right before this slide right here, I can just copy slide seven by going command C or edit copy. And then I just edit paste or command V and I've added a new slide to the pink section. So you can easily add as many pages as you need. Okay, to create, let's talk about creating. So I've already added text boxes for you on the title, but you can absolutely delete those or just change them from here if you want. So if we are doing an autobiography, I might change that, I can change the fonts here. And I can stretch the text box that it fits a little bit better. There we go, okay, so there's my title. Now let's talk about adding text boxes within the notebook. So there's two ways to add text. First way is to grab a text box, put it wherever you want. And right in there, I usually do the writing first and then I do the formatting. So now that I'm done that, I can select this. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to center it. And I think I'm going to fill this rectangle with a color. So just select the rectangle and fill color. And I'm going to do a dark gray. Now, obviously my text doesn't show up very well. So I'll just select that text and change the color to white. There we go. So now I have my title. Now the other way to add text is to insert a shape and then type into the shape. So I'm going to select a rectangle this time. I'll draw my rectangle wherever I want and I can just start typing and it'll actually type right into the rectangle. Again, I can format this however I want. I can center the text. I can color 
the rectangle. I can change the text color and I'll take the outline off of this box by going to the outline icon and selecting transparent. There we go. So those are two different ways to put text into your notebook. Let's talk about shapes. Um, so I already kind of showed you the shape with this blue rectangle, but there is a sel wide selection of shapes here that you can choose. I wanted to show you how to make a shape transparent for a second. Now, why might you need a transparent shape? Well, let's take a look at one activity that I really love for uh, Google Slides activities. So I'm just going to type a few numbers here. All right, so you would probably make it look nicer than this, but I'm just going to go quick. Okay, so there's a few numbers, and suppose that I want my students to highlight the multiples of 10. Here's how you can make a really simple highlighter. So you select a shape, we'll select the rectangle, and we'll draw a rectangle, and we're going to fill it with color. I'm going to do red. Now I'm going to take off the outline, make that transparent. Now if I drag this over top of the number, it covers up the number completely. So I don't want to do that because I want to see the number through. So what I need to do is make this shape partially transparent. And here's how I do that. So you select the shape, go to the fill color, and go down to custom. And down here you'll find a transparency slider. You just slide it wherever you want to make it transparent. Select OK. And now I have a transparent square instead. So if I want my students to highlight the multiples of 10, now they can just drag that highlighter over the number and you can see the number through. Uh, what I do is I usually make stacks of highlighters. So there's three in that stack. So now when they drag a highlighter off, there's another one underneath. Okay, so that's kind of a neat little thing to do with shapes. Uh, let's talk about images. So as you remember from this file, I showed you this uh, activity for an autobiography where images were added. And honestly, you could add images to any digital notebook that you make. I also did it with this math notebook. I added an image of a wreck and wreck. So how do you add images? So there are a few ways. If you go to insert image, you'll see all of your options here. You can, oops, you can upload. You can up, uh, take an image from your drive, from your photos, or from the camera. Now I wanted to tell you about this camera option because this is really great for if you want your students to attach a picture of their work. So think of long division, for example. If you're having your students complete a long division problem, they're probably not going to show their work in their digital notebook by typing because that would be super frustrating trying to set up a long division equation uh, using your keyboard. So the faster way would probably be to figure it out on paper and then just type the answer into your digital notebook. However, if you want students to show their work, you can have them use their camera that's right on their computer um, or device. So if you select this option, it'll, uh, the camera will come on and then you can snap a picture of your notebook paper or whatever you did your work on and it will be inserted into the page automatically. So that's a really great option for showing work. Now I'm just going to insert a random picture here. So I would normally go insert image and upload, but in this case I have some images just in another window and I'm working on a Mac so I can just drag them over and now I've got my picture. Now what can I do with this picture? Well, first of all, I can make it look a little prettier. So I'm going to put an outline on it and I can change the color of that outline if I want to. I can also link this to a website if I want to. So suppose that I am doing this in a math notebook and I want to give my students a link to a virtual wreck and wreck. So what I can do I'm going to go to Toy Theater, which is one of my favorite places for virtual manipulatives. If you haven't checked them out, be sure to do that. Here's an awesome virtual wreck and wreck. So I'm going to take the URL from here, and then I'm going to link it to this picture so that when kids click on this picture, they'll be taken directly to the Toy Theater site. So I select this picture, click insert link, 
and then just paste that URL that I copied and hit apply. Whoops, I did that kind of fast, sorry. So now when kids click on this box, there's a pop-up that gives them the option to go straight to Toy Theater and actually use the Rec and Rec. So that's a great way to link to images. Now let's think of some other options for how you could use this. Maybe you are doing a social studies project where your kids are looking at different countries and researching. You could have pictures of different countries and link those to good research websites. The sky is really the limit with this. Now another way to link an image, you can also use screenshots. So for example, let's say I didn't have a picture of a wreck and wreck kicking around, I could go to a website that I'm going to link to, and I'm back at Toy Theater here, I'm just going to take a screenshot. So on my computer it's Command Shift 4, but if you have a PC you'll have to figure out what the screenshot shortcut is. And I'll take a screenshot of that wreck and wreck picture, and then I can just drag it up or you might have to go insert image depending on what kind of computer you're on. Now I have a screenshot uh, from that website and now I can use the add link option to add a link directly to that website and now when kids click on this we can go again straight to the actual manipulative. So there's lots of option for adding pictures uh, no matter what the purpose of your digital notebook is. Okay, let's talk about clickable tabs. So as you'll notice, when you open up your notebook, I have labeled all of the tabs very simply for you. And I've linked those so that when you click on, for example, if you want to go to the yellow section, you can click here and click on the link and it'll take you directly to the yellow section. Even if you add pages to your notebook, it will still link to the correct slide. So you don't have to worry about uh, messing that up. Now you can definitely change the, the um, titles on each tab. So if you're doing your autobiography, maybe this is going to be um, my family, my pets, okay? And so you can, you can change the uh, description on each tab and then they will still link. They're still linked to the correct tab. Uh, you will have to change it on every slide. That's the only, uh, that's the only thing that uh, isn't super handy, but you can also select all of them once you get them all typed. You could, whoops, I selected everything. Just be careful there. You could just select the tab titles and you could copy those and paste them onto every slide really quick and that would take you under a minute probably to get through the whole notebook. Okay, so these tabs, um, okay, if you haven't used Google Slides very much, be sure to listen carefully to this part. If you click on the tab in the part that has words in it, you will see that a cursor comes up. It doesn't give me the prompt to advance to the proper slide. If I click in that rectangle, but not right on the words, then it gives me the prompt to advance to the proper slide. Okay, now I've created these using shapes with text inside. So this is just unfortunately one of the downsides to doing it this way. So I do recommend that if you are using them like this with your students, that you just tell them, and I mean, they'll get the idea of this and they'll be fine. Just tell them to click just outside the text, not right in the text. And that's how they can get uh, that option to advance to the slide. Another option, is to not link, uh, or sorry, not have the words on every tab and just use a table of contents. So for example, your very first page could be a table of contents where you make clickable links. So if I wanted to change this, for example, I'll just show you how to do this quickly. If I, I'm just gonna make four rectangles. And I'll just change those numbers quickly. Of course, you would probably put different uh, headings in here rather than just tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four. But if I wanted to link these to the proper tabs, uh, tab four, so let's start with tab four, the blue one, I can see over here in my left window that the blue tab starts on page, uh, sorry, slide 14. So I'm just going to link this 
press the link, and I'm going to link it to a slide in this presentation and link it to slide 14 and apply. Okay, so now when I click on this square, now I'll be taken to slide 14, or on that rectangle, sorry. So that's another option. If you don't want to write directly on the tabs, you can just create a clickable table of contents. Okay, now there is a way, another way that I wanted to show you, uh, if you don't want, if let's say you want to write on the tabs, but you don't want the text to be editable, or you don't want uh, kids to be able to click inside that text. I'm going to show you a workaround. It does involve a little bit more work, but, um, but it works. Okay, so suppose that I take this page, I'll just get rid of this, and I'm just going to type one more thing on here. Okay. Okay, so let's suppose that um, you want to set up your notebooks for your students. So you've got your headings. And you don't want students to change those. Okay, so this is the heading and you also don't want your students to be able to change this stuff here. Here's one way that you can do this. You can add another slide. So I'm just going to go to new slide and blank slide. You can take a screenshot of the slide that you've already designed. So for me, this is com command shift four and take a screenshot. And now you can insert that screenshot as a background image. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll go to slide six, which is our blank slide. We'll go to background. We'll go choose image and it's the most recent one. So now when that is inserted, that means that we will not be able to move anything around the page. It'll all be embedded into the slide because we're, we are inserting it as a background image. And now this is what we have as our background. You'll notice that now I can't click on anything. I can't change anything. So now I could easily make these tabs clickable by adding a rectangle over top of them. And of course I want to make that rectangle transparent and I want to make the outline transparent as well. And now I can just link the rectangle to the appropriate page. So in this case, this is the page, so slide six, we wanna link this one too. Okay, and I can make transparent rectangles for every single tab. And now no matter where I click on the rectangle, the cursor's not going to show up because there's really not any text. The text is all embedded into the background. I'm just clicking on the transparent rectangle, just the invisible rectangle. So that's a workaround. Um, it's a little bit more labor intensive, and so I don't love that as an option. I, I will tell you my preference, but this also includes a little bit more work. So if you want to design, design a slide where the background is not movable or editable, and these are prime examples that I gave you in the inspiration section, notice that I can't move anything. Uh, all the labels on the tabs are embedded everything is embedded right into the slide um, on this one. It, whoops, I made a link on that one I forgot about. Anyways, everything is embedded. This is how I did that. I used PowerPoint. So this is the PowerPoint presentation now, which is included for you. In PowerPoint, you can do your, your main labels, headings, anything that you don't want changed. So I can design in PowerPoint, um, just using, again, text boxes or, or whatever. And then what I would do is save, you go file, or in, sorry, export, and I'm going to export these all as a PNG image. And I'd go export, and now I would go back to my Google Slides. Sorry, I'm not gonna do everything here. 
but I would go back to my slides and then I would insert those PNG images as backgrounds on the slides. Okay, um, and then once you're done that step, you would insert anything that you want the kids to be able to change, such as text boxes, uh, pictures, manipulatives, etc. So that is one workaround as well. So that is all that I have for you today. Um, I hope that this video was useful. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And I can't wait to see what you and your students create with these digital notebook templates. Thank you so much. Have a great day.